Well, amen, amen. Good to be saved. Amen. Good to be in church on a Wednesday morning. That's a good time to be in church. You know why? It's always a good time to be in church. Amen. I want to mention something about what uh, two of the Tharp brothers mentioned about <clears throat> church size. And I saved at a church of 5,000. I was on the staff of a church of 2,000. And uh, I helped uh, take it down to about 10. But um, <clears throat> I did my part. But, uh, but, but Brother Russell said his church about 60 people. 60 to 100 is, is a large church. That's about the average church. I want to say that for two reasons. Number one, <clears throat> some of you guys, you need to go, well, you know, if I'm going to get 60 people, I don't, no, no, no. I had a guy say this many years ago. Uh, he said, there's some guy in the middle of nowhere. He's got 15 people. Uh, he, he had, he's always had 15 people. He'll always ever only have 15 people. And he said he thinks he's a, a failure in the ministry. And he said what he doesn't understand <clears throat> is he, he may be the only thing between that community and hell itself. And we are to be salt. And so um, uh, at last year, last year, I don't know what you think about my ministry, but last year, now I don't count the pastor and his wife or me and my wife in attendance when I go to a, go to a meeting because the pastor's wife are going to be there and me and my wife are going to be there. Uh, last year, the smallest crowd that I preached to was three. And now there's seven if you want to count the pastor and his wife and me and my wife. But um, that's not even a crowd, that's a cr <laughs> This year's smallest crowd was eight, so we've almost doubled our tents. Um, and, uh, and I tell guys, I said, two things I never worry about. I never worry about size of the crowd, never worry about size of the offering. When I come here, I don't care who's going to be here. I don't care about the offering. If, uh, if I get a good offering, that's fine. If I get a bad offering, just go down the road. Bad mouth you. <laughs> but, um, but that's it. You, you just uh, bloom where you're planted. Do what uh, God wants you to do. Uh, open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 24. Um, I'm going to have to ask you to bear with me on some things. I'm going to say something, and, and uh, you'll want to throw something very heavy and hard. Uh, but I want you to wait until I'm done before we throw it. Uh, you know, one of the things, it's always easy, <clears throat> it's always easy to, easy to make up rules that, that will benefit you. Uh, I was standing, you know, I don't care. Somebody says, do you cover your book table when nobody's there? I said, no. They said, uh, aren't you afraid somebody will steal something? I said, what, they're going to steal a book and read it and then live for God? Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that a terrible thing? And, uh, but, I, but I'm standing by the table. Now, look, you want to steal from me? Steal from me. Don't do it when I'm standing there, fool. Okay? I, but it's just a little girl. A little girl walked by, and she just picked up a CD. And I said, well, hon, what are you doing? She goes, well, these are free for kids. Well, nobody told me that. Smack that little punk. I tell you, you're in a nine-year-old in a country I'm afraid of. But, uh, <clears throat> but you, in other words, you make up rules. And sometimes we make up rules uh, about the Bible that will help us say what we want to say, and they're not really rules, okay? But there are some that, that you and I had nothing to do with. They have been around a long time, uh, and they are just good general rules. Here's one. I think you sign on to this. The Bible is my final authority in all matters of faith and practice. Now, truth be known, you don't believe that anyway. The Bible is two things. It's where you get your doctrine from, and it's where you justify everything you want to do. Okay? Now that's the truth. That's the truth. How many times you get a sermon and go, wow, if I can find a, if I can find a text for this. Um, let me give you. I'm going, to, I'm going to bequeath to you the greatest sermon text in Scripture. This is, if you guys say, man, I got a message. I just don't have a verse. This is it. Jesus wept. You say, why is that the great sermon? You preach anything. Uh, I'm going to preach today about Jesus wept because uh, you guys didn't give much last week. Jesus wept because you didn't give enough. <laughs> And next week, Jesus wept because you didn't win enough souls. Jesus wept because there were no people in church. Jesus wept because somebody disagreed with the pastor. I mean, it's the greatest sermon text there is, okay? <clears throat> but the Bible says, the Bible's, or, or we say we believe the Bible is our final authority in all matters of faith and practice. So if the Bible doesn't tell us how to take care of archaic words or italicized words, then, you, then anything else is just your opinion, Right? Okay, uh, here's another, uh, another rule. Uh, uh, there's the thing called the law of first mention. Uh, I didn't make that up. That was around before I ever got saved. Basically, basically, I said, uh, the Bible tells you, or, or, or it's the teaching that the first time something appears pretty much sets the stage of the way God looks at it. First snake appears in Genesis chapter 3. 
And I think if it's a snake, if it ain't a belt or a hat band, it ain't a good snake. Okay? I guys, you ever eat snake? Hey, I'll take a drumstick. And so, um, <clears throat> uh, but that's just, that is, that is, that is a rule. Uh, here is another one. Never define the clear by the unclear. You say, what does that mean? Well, if you're going to define the clear by the unclear, let me ask you a question. Does the Bible say, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved? For by grace he is saved through faith, that not of yourselves, as a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Therefore, if any man, no, I won't, I won't even go anymore. We, we believe salvation is by grace. The Bible teaches that very clearly, correct? So if somebody shows you, well, look, this says endure to the end, you'll be saved. You never, it, you never interpret what's clear by what is unclear. You understand? Well, here's another one, real simple one. When you're reading your Bible, ask yourself this. Who's talking? Who are they talking to? And what are they talking about? Now, uh, I am going to tell you three things. You're going to agree with the first one. You're going to want to throw me out in the second one. You're going to agree with the third one. I believe the tribulation uh, is in the future. Okay. Uh, I had somebody tell me, they said, you know, I never thought we'd be here in 2015. I said, I did. Oh, I did. I, I, I believed we'd be here in 2015. I thought we'd be 15 years in the millennium, but I, you know, I thought the tribulation would have been long gone, and, and 15 years ago the millennium would have started. So I did believe we'd be here in 2015. I just think that we think we'd be on this side of the tribulation, this side of the rapture. All right, I don't. Now look, look, look. I believe the tribulation <clears throat> is seven years long. Don't don't shut you shut down when I say what's next. And I believe that three and a half years of that tribulation, the Lord's coming back for His. Oh, you look scared now. But you better get the third part. I'm not going through any of the tribulation. Right. Now you say, well, how do you say the second one and the third one? Well, you need to know who's talking, who they're talking to, what are they talking about. Uh, you know, God is a very smart God. You know what he does? He'll take an idiot. Come on, guys. He has idiots. He has idiots, okay? Some of you are saying, yeah, no, no. Anyway, um, so you know what he does? He'll take them and put them out in the desert, give them a half a dozen just like him, and they just, uh, they just stand around in a desert, all eight or nine of them, and, and uh, you know, bay at the moon or whatever they do, wear little tinfoil hats. I don't know. <clears throat> but God puts them out there where they won't hurt anybody. And then the devil invented a thing called the Internet. Um, I'm sorry, Al Gore invented it. Well, it's pretty much the same. But, um, uh, uh, and, and, and now here's what happens. A guy can be out in the middle of nowhere with, uh, you know, a church the size of a phone booth. But if he's got good video, people think he's got good doctrine. And if he really wants to get in your church, you know, he's got the magic words. Remember the old thing about uh, Alabama and the 40 thieves, open sesame? We don't believe in that stuff. We believe in, I believe the King James Bible is the Word of God. And if a guy believes the King James Bible is the Word of God or says he does, your guard goes down and your people's guard goes down. I want you to know something, guys. I want to convince people that the Bible is absolutely perfect. What Bible? The King James Bible, okay? But there are a few people using it. If I could, I'd get them using the NIV. So why would you do that? Because then when they came around some preacher or some Bible-believing Christian, uh, if they, it, you'd say, wait a minute, do you believe the King James Bible? No, I'm NIV, man. You'd shut him down. But he says, I believe the King James Bible, and boom, you open, up, open your heart up to him, uh, and, then, uh, and then you end up wandering in the wilderness. Now, I want, to look, I want you to look here at the Lord coming back in Matthew chapter 24. And bear with me on this, okay? I'll, we're going to go through some scripture. You might want to get a piece of paper. There's going to be a lot of scripture, and you're going to want to write something down or get the CD or, uh, uh, or whatever, but, um, or wait till I make a really nice video. But um, 27, For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even out of the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. We see right there, the Lord's coming back. Uh, for whoso, uh, for, uh, I'm sorry, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately, after the tribulation of those days. Boy, a guy could almost, almost name a video with that. A guy could almost make a video and put it on the internet and call it after the tribulation. Maybe you ought to check. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Uh, and then shall appear, there it is, the sign. Look at this, this is after the tribulation. The Lord's coming after the tribulation, says right there. Uh, and then shall, the, uh, shall uh, appear the sign of the uh, Son of Man in heaven. 
And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds uh, of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send uh, his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. So there's a trumpet. Uh, and he shall gather together his elect. There you go. We're the elect. Uh, uh, and um, uh, from the four winds, uh, from one end of heaven to the other. Now, I've got brethren. Look, you can believe anything you want. You really can. I really don't care. Please don't care with everything I believe. But, um, but, you know, I hear people say, well, there's just no difference. The whole Bible's the same. Oh, really? Then how come in, a in Acts chapter 11 it said the gospel was first opened to the Gentiles? Because before then, they weren't in. All right? Things change. And, and here you, you got guys going around, some of your church members. Look, guys, if I go around to, a, uh, to, to 10 different shepherds, and all 10 of them say, the same wolf is killing my sheep, somebody's got to go hunting for the wolf. And so there's a fella in uh, Arizona, his name is Stephen Anderson. And your people are listening to him, and some of you boneheads are listening to him. And you know why? I'm going to tell you exactly why. Because he's got good video. That is the only reason. And we equate the quality of the video to the quality of the message. Isn't that true? That's exactly it. And he, and he teaches exactly what I showed you. Because uh, here's the teaching. There's a seven-year tribulation. I don't know whoever came up with this first half of the tribulation is not so bad. I mean, they make it sound like I want to stay. I don't know, you know. <laughs> Well, the first half isn't so bad. Oh, yeah, you know, water turned to blood, ice cubes coming out of the sky, splitting my skull. Great place, you know. It's kind of like, like having your mother-in-law move in. And, and this teaching is this. There's seven years, and the first three and a half are called the tribulation, and the last half are called the, the last three and a half are the great tribulation. Uh, that's the wrath of God, and we're going to get out before the wrath. Uh, that was pioneered by a fellow by the name of Rosenthal. Messed up. Okay, messed up. And some of you are bothered. You know what, what your problem is? Now look, guys, guys, you, you guys come over here to Bible college. I don't care what Bible college. I went to Bible college. I was, uh, I was newly saved. It was my first year. I, I didn't know anything. But you know what I established my first year in Bible college? If this guy that's teaching me Bible can teach me Bible without being wrong somewhere, if he, can, if he is not wrong in any, in any point, he is God. And I knew he wasn't God. You say, well, then I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll find out where he's wrong. I'll change that. Then I'll be God. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what we think, okay? And, and so, you know what, you guys? Here's the problem, guys. You're going to come to Bible college. You're going to give me three verses on the deity of Christ, three verses on the Trinity, three verses on baptism, and you're never going to read your Bible enough to find five verses. And then somebody's going to show you something. They're going to tell you that you're not going through the tribulation. Then somebody's going to show you this, and you're going to scratch your head because you never st studied it out yourself. And I am sorry because I'm talking to them, but that's where some of you guys are because you did the same thing. Now, all I'm going to do is take a look at this passage, and let's do this. Let's ask who's talking, who are they talking to, and what are they talking about? Well, it shouldn't be too tough. Uh, look what it says in uh, chapter 24. Look at verse 1. Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him uh, for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them. Uh, look at verse 4. And Jesus answered and said. Guys, Jesus starts talking. Nobody, nobody interrupts him. All, of, all everything I just read to you, uh, uh, starting at verse 27, that it was spoken by him. Now, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, correct? But don't we get our church polity from Paul? And don't we follow the Pauline? And I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not, I'm not uh, throwing my Bible through a bologna slicer and coming up with one and a half pages that I can accept. But the fact is that that's where we get our church polity. Um, you keep the Lord's Supper. You don't keep it because of John chapter 6. You keep it because of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And so the Lord is talking, Okay. But that's okay, because he's God, and he tends to always be right. <laughs> Look what he says. All right, first off, before I, before I read this, let me ask you a question. Do you, are you waiting for Christ to come? Okay. What if I told you he is here? He already came back. He's on a mountaintop in Tibet. Now, wait, wait a minute. He said, oh, you're being funny. No, no, no. I'm asking you. If I said that, what if I tried to convince you that he has come back and that he is living on a mountaintop in Tibet. Why would you reject that? Wouldn't you reject it because that's not how he's coming? 
He, when, look, when he comes, we will know. Because he comes, we go. Well, what if I told you he was out in the desert? Let's say Arizona. You would say, no, no. See, we're looking for Christ. We're not looking for Christ to come. We're looking for Christ to come back. And we know how he's coming back. When he's coming back, he has taken us out of here, correct? So, so I don't really worry about it, you know. You know, you know. you know what the scariest moment in a Christian's life is? I'm going to tell you, this is the scariest moment in a Christian's life. It is when they change the time on a Sunday morning... And you didn't set your watch forward. And you show up an hour before anybody's there, and there's like three of you went, oh, man. That was not a car horn last night. I am stuck now. Can I be the pastor? Anyway. <clears throat> but the fact is that there's no way somebody can say that he's here. Uh, the the, uh, the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses say came in 1911 to a mountaintop somewhere, and he's kind of wafting through the ether right now. No, no, no. When he comes, we go. So we know he hasn't come. Why? Because we haven't gone. All right? And I know some of you probably still be here, but don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> verse 4, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And she'll deceive many. Now, wait a second. How could anybody, how could anybody on this planet show up and say, I am Christ and anyone in this room be fooled? Your doctrine prevents you from being fooled by that. Right? That is why doctrine, doctrine is a good thing, man. It protects you. But isn't that true? I mean, look, if a guy walked in here and he had the flowing hair and whatever that you saw, whatever you think he looked like from the movie you saw. And he had nail holes in his hands. He could show you a hole in his side. And he said, I am Christ. You know what you'd say? No, you're not. You can't be. Say, why? Because, because I'm going to meet you up there. We're not meeting down here. Right? So your doctrine would prevent you. So, so why would Jesus be telling us to watch out for something that we never have to watch out for? Well, that, then it must be he's not talking to us. Well, who is he talking to? Jews. He's talking to the children of Israel. Watch. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you should hear wars and rumors of wars. Yeah, 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 I know verse 6. You say, well, that's what's going on now. Guys, you could take that verse and superimpose it on the history of man. You could have put it in 1940. You think in 1938, 39, when Hitler was coming to power in Germany, that there were a bunch of independent Baptists over here preaching he's the Antichrist? I will guarantee you they were. You say, why? Well, he just fit. He was, he was down on the Jews. He's coming to power in Europe. He must be the man of sin. Uh, he's got to be the guy. Uh, there's wars and rumors of wars. I mean, there's, there's rumors of wars in, in the Pacific with Japan. There's rumors of wars in Africa because uh, Italy's going into Ethiopia. There's rumors of wars in Europe. You see what I'm saying? I mean, yes, well, see, preacher, wars and rumors of wars, that's right now. That, tell me when it wasn't. You'd be hard-pressed to look at history and find a time that there was no war or rumor of war. <clears throat> and the only reason I'm saying that is because that is a pretty general truth. Uh, and you should hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Uh, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Well, preacher, there's earthquakes in diverse places. Absolutely. Yeah, there are. I think more places than ever have been before. But we're still out of here before it all starts. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And, uh, and ye shall be hated of all nations for, for my name's sake. Now we say, preacher, that's true too. That's always been true. That has always been true. Our, the men that penned the words of the, of the book that, you're, that you got in your lap, they were hated of the nations and were murdered. They were boiled in oil. They were, they were burned. Their heads were cut off. I mean, is that not true? Yeah. Yes, there has been a brief time, especially because of this good, godly, Christian nation, while it lasted, that there was an acceptance. But you can still go around the world. Hey, guys, this was a Christian nation in 1956 when missionaries went to Ecuador and got murdered. So it's always been that the world just does not like our message. They're just, uh, 
<coughs> they're just getting a little more power than they ever had before. And then, uh, then shall many be offended, and uh, shall be betray one another, and shall he hate one another. Now, I know that sounds like a Baptist fellowship. I understand that. I understand. <laughs> and many pro false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. Uh, and, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I know you can inspirationally preach this. And he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Did we just get a change in doctrine? Or did we get something that wasn't written to us? Okay, then if that's not real, okay, look at verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom. You do not preach the gospel of the kingdom. Don't kid yourself. You, you say, well, how do you know? Oh, it's a little thing called Bible. You need to read it. Keep your place here. You want to see what the gospel of the kingdom is? Take a look at chapter 10. Chapter 10, verse 1, it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding uh, his 12 disciples, he departed thence to, to teach and to preach in their cities. All right, so he sends these guys out. And look what he sent. This is where he sent, I'm sorry, I was reading verse, chapter 11. Had you scared, didn't you? Didn't I? Okay, now, now try it. Verse 10, chapter 10, verse 1. And we have called unto him his 12 disciples. Keep note, his 12 disciples. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Then he goes down through here and names them. And look what he says, verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Well, if you're going to accept everything he said, then you've got to quit witnessing to Gentiles. Isn't he saying this to Jews? He didn't even want you to go to the Samaritans. In any of the city of the Samaritans, enter, enter you not but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Watch. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know what you can't find in the Old Testament? You can't find a Jew worried about where he's going when he dies. Because Jews never, never think about that. You know what they're always thinking about? What's, what's down the road? What's in my future? They are always looking for Christ to come and set up the kingdom. That's what they're always looking for. All right? It's you and me. We worry about our sins and where we're going when we die. Okay? And so here's what it was. Christ had showed up and he said, you go and tell the people that I'm supposed to be coming to, Israel, and you tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right. Now just for a little, look, look at this. Look at chapter 12. See if we can find a contradiction in the Bible. Uh, verse 17, that it might be fulfilled, uh, which was spoken by Zanus the prophet, saying, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, and whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show forth judgment to the Gentiles. Verse 21, and in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Wait a minute. Didn't he just say in verse 10, don't go to the Gentiles? Uh, chapter 10. Didn't he just say in chapter 12, you're going to the Gentiles? You say, well, what happened? What comes between 10 and 12? 11. And in 11, he offers himself to Israel to be their Messiah. You know why? Because somebody's keeping a checklist. Come on, somebody is. Isn't that what you do? Well, you know, this has happened and this has happened and maybe the Lord's coming. Look, those Jews have always been looking for their Christ to come and set up his kingdom. And I'll guarantee you, it wasn't they all rejected him. There was somebody, you know, probably the guy that really spent some time in his Bible, and they'd say, uh, hey, uh, Isaac, we'll call him Isaac, nice Jewish name. Uh, Isaac, uh, and remember, weren't there many that came before the Lord saying, I am Christ, and led some into the desert, and led some off this way, correct? And so they go, well, uh, why, you think this guy's the Christ? He's got people following him. No, that's not the Christ. Why? Well, that guy's, he's from Egypt. If he's from Egypt, he can't be the Christ. Oh, okay. So here they say, uh, we, hey, hey, hi, how's Jesus doing? Uh, you know, uh, he goes, well, I don't know. He'd have to be from Bethlehem. They said he is. Oh, 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 oh okay. Okay, well, he's got that one checked. Well, you know, yeah, but he'd have to be a Jew. He is a Jew. Oh, he's a Jew. Oh, okay, okay, he's a Jew. Yeah, but he'd, he'd have to be the line of uh, Judah, that tribe. Yeah, he is. Mm. Hey, he'd have to be working some miracles. Whoa, let me tell you about miracles. Right? And this guy's checking every yes box on the list. Every single thing he's got. There's one box with no mark. There's a yes and a no. And they said, so he must be Christ. And the guy that's got the checklist with all the yeses says, no, he can't be. Whoa, 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 he's got all, you got all these yeses. Yeah, I know, but I got one down here. I can't check yes. Well, what is it? 
Well, it, it says here that before Christ comes, Elijah will show up. And nobody named Elijah ever showed up before this Jesus guy. And now that he's here, he can't show up. And we asked John if he was him, and he said he wasn't him. So this guy can't be Christ. You know what the Lord took care of in Matthew chapter 11? He took care of that little problem. You know what he said? He said, hey, you guys are out here, John the Baptist. Who are you going to hear? You hearing a prophet? Whoa, no, no, no. You hear much more than a prophet. Look what it says, verse uh, 8. But what went you out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. Uh, behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my message before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before him. Stop, look up here. Here's what I think. When he said those words right there, the guy with the checklist, who is, he's not necessarily hostile against Jesus Christ. He probably kind of likes him. And he said, I got all these yeses, but he still can't be the guy. And when he said, Behold, I send my message before my face, thy face, that guy went, Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the box. What's he talking? What's he going to say? Verily I send to you among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until the kingdom of heaven, uh, suffer, uh, until now the, the kingdom of heaven suffered with violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if ye will receive it, this is Elias, who was for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. You know what Jesus Christ just said? He said, listen, you guys, if you'll accept John as Elijah, now I don't mean reincarnated. It said the spirit and power, okay? You know that. But anyway, uh, he said, if you guys will accept John as Elijah, I am your Messiah. Here I am. And I always say it this way, guys. You know what the Jews did? Come on, have you ever said no without saying anything? Those Jews put their hands in their pockets like a spastic at an auction. They were afraid to scratch their nose lest they bought something. And they whistled in the wind. And, and I am a King James Bible believer, and I wouldn't change a word of it. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to retype set it. And I'd put a big old space between verse 15 and 16 because that's where time changed. Yep. That's where everything changed. Because up to there, he's preaching the kingdom of the heaven. You tell the kingdom of heaven, you tell them Jews, it's at hand. He sent a dozen guys out all through Israel, said, tell them it's at hand. I'm going to set up my kingdom. He says, guys, if you'll take Elijah, John is Elijah, I can set up my kingdom. And they all went... And then he goes off in verse 16 in another tangent. He says, you, you bunch of spoiled brats. You've been praying to my father for me and I show up and now you don't want me. What's he say? He said, man, you, we piped into you and you have not danced. And so in, verse, in chapter 10, he sends them to the Jews. In chapter 11, the Jews reject him. And in chapter 12, he says, okay, I'll go to the dogs. Yep. You ever hear that? Oh, man, he's gone to the dogs. Aren't you glad? <laughs> So guys, look what it says back chapter 24. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. You say, who's going to preach that? Well, it's not going to be a dozen guys, but I know how many. I know exactly how many. 144,000. They're going to preach that gospel for three and one half years. They're going to preach that gospel with the genuine Elijah, who never has died yet, so he's not reincarnated, uh, and Moses, who God is going to take care of him, bring him back. And for three and a half years, they're going to preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay? Now you say, well, wait a minute. How come 12 back then and 144,000 now? Two reasons. Number one, I, I saw some stats, and I, 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 can't, uh, I can't remember what they were, but I'm, so I'm going to have to just guess at this. But at the time of Jesus Christ, do you understand the world was still just getting over the flood? A lot of people died in the flood. This pretty big world, and it was emptied. I know somebody said, I, I, I heard where they, there were less than a billion people. Maybe like, like uh, half a million people or half a billion people, 500, uh, 500 million people on the planet at that time. We've got 8 billion right now. After the rapture, if I, am genesis, if I am generous, let's say 2 billion people on this planet are saved. That would still leave 6 billion, correct? I'll tell you something else. The time Jesus Christ was here, where'd you find a Jew? You found them between 150 miles and 50 miles. That's where most of them were, correct? They were in what is known as Israel. That's a neat place to find an Israelite. You understand that today there are more Jews in New York City than there are in Israel? There are Jews all around the world. So that 144,000 are going to preach that gospel, tell them Jews, he's talking to Jews. And he's talking to a Jew about a, about a Jewish message. 
Now, I want to show you. Watch this. Look at verse 15. You say, oh, I don't believe it. Well, that's okay. You don't have to. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Oh, can you show me a holy place? You can't show me a holy place. Okay. Well, I think the place I got saved, place I got saved, place you got saved, it's wonderful, but it's not a holy place. There's not a holy place. We don't believe in holy places. Isn't that true? We don't believe in holy fathers. We don't believe in holy church. We don't believe in, uh, we don't believe in a holy place. And if they put the temple up tomorrow, the Jews would call that the holy of holies, and we'd know that it was as empty as a closet. We don't recognize a holy place. But who recognizes the, the temple as a holy place? The people he's talking to. And you know what is, this is one of the sweetest things I've ever seen, one of the neatest things, verse 15, that parenthesis. That parenthesis, you know what that is? That's a prophecy. Say, what is it? That is telling you. This is taking place after we're gone, guys. This is taking place in the first half of tribulation. That, that he said, when ye, therefore, shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. You know what that just did? God just told you that parenthesis that during those, those, those first, that's first half of the tribulation, there's going to be Jews reading the New Testament. Some Jew is going to be reading that and go, whoa, whoa. Look at Let me just give you a thought on the Antichrist, okay? Uh, he's got to get the whole world to acknowledge him. Okay? Whoever he is, he is not fixing the economy of this country. He is not fixing the economy of this world. Right? I'll tell you something else. He's not going to bring peace. He's a man of war. No, because he shows up, without a, he shows up with a bow without arrows. Ask the bow hunter when he has a bow and no arrows. Fired him, right? You got the, the, the quivers up, buddy. You fire. So why has he got a bow and no arrows? He's already whipped everybody. What is this man of peace? He's a man of war. They said, can any man make war against him, right? All right. So how about this? How about somebody? I don't care who it is. He may even be, who knows, a Kenyan Muslim. But um, <laughs> <coughs> he finally said, now think about this. Do you know who the enemy of the world is today? Muslims. That's, that's, a, that's, a, uh, that's a, a nasty statement. It's a true statement. Guys, you can't. Muslims are killing Christians. Muslims are killing Jews. Muslims are killing Hindus. Muslims are killing Buddhists. Muslims are killing communists in China. Muslims are killing Muslims everywhere. And what if the Antichrist, before he becomes the Antichrist, says, you know something? I have had it with these guys. And he just pounds them to sand. I mean, he absolutely levels Mecca and everything else. He whips those countries around Israel. Wouldn't the whole... Look, I know all them people are saying, well, let's be politically correct. And they're, they're, a, um, they're, a, they're a religion of peace. Yeah, and I know which peace they want. <laughs> um, but they'll all be glad when they die. And now he's the world's hero. Because he has, he has stopped the, the bombs, and he has stopped the, the uh, rape, and he has stopped cutting off children's heads. And the whole world thanks him. And he looks over at Israel and says, hey guys, nobody's going to mess with you now. Go ahead and build your temple. And I tell you what, when you get it done, I'd like to be, for, be there for the dedication. Boy, they'd, he'd show up that dedication. They go, you know, people, we wouldn't have this temple if it wasn't for this great man right here. Yes, he's real man of peace. Yes, I'm a man of peace. Listen, you know, I, I don't want to sit here. I think I'll sit here. No, no, you can't go. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to sit right here. But that's the holy place. Yeah, well, that's fit for God. That's who I am. And when Israel says no, that's when the blood rolls. So he's talking to Israel. Uh, then he that is in, let me ask you a question, verse 16. Then let them which be in Judea. It is a locality on this planet. It isn't those people that be in Kansas. Right? In Judea. Um, well, flee to the mountain, into the mountains. Uh, let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Let him uh, which is in the field uh, return, or uh, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, uh, and to them that give suck in those days. Watch this. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on. Now look, I know the old timers used to call Sunday the Sabbath, but everybody in here that's got this much brains and knows this much Bible knows that the Sabbath is not Sunday. It's Saturday. And they still honor that. 
For then, oh, look at this. For then shall be great tribulation. Isn't that amazing? Great tribulation. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, uh, nor, uh, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days be shortened, there should, there should no fl uh, uh, flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those, those days shall be shortened. Guys, you say, well, see, that's talking about the elect. So? Well, I'm called the elect. So? I hate to tell you this, guys. Do you know there were some people called the elect before you showed up? Uh, don't turn there. Just mark it down. Read the first four verses of uh, Isaiah chapter 45. And he says, Israel, mine elect. They were the elect before you and I were running for office. But watch verse 23. Then if any man say unto, unto, the, unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Nobody is ever going to tell you, I, hey, guys, Christ is, he, he's, he's out in Kansas, he's out in Arizona, he's out in California. We wouldn't believe that, right? He's talking to somebody that would believe it, right? Because they're looking for him to show up. For there shall uh, arise false, pro uh, false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders in, in, his, in so much <clears throat> that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. Sorry, that's Israel, not you. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if, you, if he shall say unto, me, unto you, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Uh, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. For as, oh, now look at how this folds right in. It's almost like the Bible should be read maybe chapter by chapter, not just a passage. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. <clears throat> Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, uh, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sign of the, of the Son of Man in heaven, uh, and then shall all the ti uh, tribes of the... We're not in tribes right now, but um, survivors trying to get there. Isn't that... What is that? Survivor? What is that? There's a reality TV program. Is that called Survivor or something like that? I, I, I don't know. I don't watch it, you know. And, um, but uh, they, 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 and, and they, they're, tra they're training people to be tribal. You know what some of these tattoos are called? Tribal. And if you would just do this, when you hear, oldest, oh, isn't this gang warfare just terrible? Next time you read an article like that, do one thing. Supplant the word gang with tribe and it all makes sense. Because that's what we're headed back to. Hey, Who's killing black people in Africa? It ain't white people. It's black people from a different... Who's killing white folks in Kosovo and Croatia? It ain't black people. It's white people from a different tribe. Tribes of the earth, and, and they shall see the Lord of uh, the, the Son of Man coming in the clouds of, of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send forth his angels with a great, a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall uh, gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. All right, here's what's going to happen. We're going to leave. The Lord's going to come back, and we're going to leave, okay? I am not saying, that, you, know, you know, one thing about tribulation, we say it's seven years long, but I, do you really think it's going to start like, uh, like there's going to be some announcement, today is the first day of the tribulation. You know, you know, if it doesn't rain for a day, nobody says, we're in a drought. Right. We are in a drought. You know what they say? You know, it hadn't been raining for six months. This drought started six months ago. I don't know that they're going to know the day. I don't know the tribulation is going to start the day we leave. Okay, but we know it's going to start sometime after, after we are gone. And, and they're going to recognize something is going on. So, uh, look what it says. Take a look at... Uh, Take a look at Revelation. Look at Revelation chapter 11. You can keep your place here if you want. Go, go to Revelation chapter 11. And here's where the two witnesses show up. I believe they're Moses and Elijah. I have people try to tell me there's somebody else. Uh, who knows? They may be Abbott and Costello. <laughs> they will not be Westcott and Hort. <clears throat> but look what it says in verse 3. 
and I'll give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand, two hundred, and threescore days. Guys, they're not here for a month. They're not here for two months. They're for, here for half of the tribulation. Them, these two guys show up, and the 144,000 show up. You know what those guys do? They start going to them Jews and saying, listen, man, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He is coming back, and, and it's going to start. You better believe this. And they're going to go around for three and a half years. Of course, you know what happens. Uh, those guys get killed. Uh, they get killed, verse 8, in Jerusalem. Look. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Uh, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, uh, and shall not suffer their, uh, their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, uh, and shall send gifts one to another, because the two witnesses, uh, two prophets, uh, uh, these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear uh, fell upon all that saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. You say, that sounds like a rapture. It is. Uh, is it ours? You know, where, you know where you guys go wrong? You get greedy. You don't you think every time you see a rapture passage, you try to claim it. You try to claim it, you're going to go through tribulation. Or at least halfway through it. You know that this is the only rapture you can watch take place on, you can watch that rapture take place. In fact, in three verses, I'm going to show you this rapture take place. Look at chapter 14. In chapter 14, look at verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion. So he comes down, right? He doesn't come down to Mount Zion to get us. We meet him in the clouds. In this one, he comes down. Isn't that what they said in, Ma in Matthew 24? They're going to see him coming down. Uh, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion. Where's Mount Zion? It's in Jerusalem, right? Okay, so we're talking about the lamb is standing on the planet, on Mount Zion, and look who's with him. And with him, 140 and 4,000, having their father's names written in their foreheads. In, in <clears throat> Revelation chapter 14, verse 1, you've got Jesus and 144,000, and probably everybody that lined up with them, everybody that believed what they preached. But they're standing there. Or at least 144,000 are. Got to be a little crowded. And they're standing on this planet, right? Look at the next verse. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Harping, harping, harping. Say that ten times fast. You say, well, what do you reckon that voice says? How about, come up hither? Say, so how do you know he says that? Because look where they are in the next verse. And they, who's he talking, isn't 144,000? That's who he's talking about. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne. Well, you sure it's that throne? Well, it's the one with four beasts and, and the elders. We saw that in Revelation chapter 4. And no man could, watch this, and no man could learn that song, but the 140 and 4,000 which were redeemed from the earth. In verse 1, they're in the earth. In verse 2, they hear a voice. And in verse 3, they are, they are redeemed from the earth. So they, they leave halfway through tribulation, guys, we get out three and a half years before them. Now, if you want to go through the tribulation, I don't care. In fact, you know, some of my brethren want to go through the tribulation. And I'd, I'd like some of my brethren to go through the tribulation. But you know what happens? Now, look, here's what it is. The first half is tribulation, great tribulation, call it what you want. The last half is the time of Jacob's troubles. The first half, the three and a half years, this part that everybody's trying to paint up as some kind of vacation. That is where God is pounding this earth for rejecting his son. But in the middle, it changes to the time of Jacob's trouble. And that's when this guy gets on them. Remember, he sits in that holy place and says, I am God. And those Jews are going to go, no, you're not. And he's going to say, you're dead meat. Look at chapter 12. Look at chapter 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, uh, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of, of 12, uh, 12 stars. 
<clears throat> and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Uh, and there, there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and, seven, uh, and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And he drew his tail, uh, uh, his tail uh, drew the third part of the stars of heaven. If you check it out, there's three names in heaven. The three names in heaven are Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. That's three. I think they all three got one third of the heaven. You know what I think? I think when, when, when Gabriel showed up in Luke chapter 2 and said, Behold, and, to, and announced the birth of Jesus Christ to the shepherds, I think one third of heaven would stand behind him. I'd get your attention too, wouldn't it? Yeah. Doesn't it say the dragon fights in his angels? The devil in his angels? And they're not all Democrats. And the dragon stood before the woman that was ready to be uh, delivered uh, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Uh, and she brought forth a man child uh, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So, so they leave, but somebody stays. Who stays? Israel, the ones that didn't believe that, what those guys preached. They didn't preach that, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand and they stay. And what happens to the woman? The woman fled into the wilderness. We know where that is, Selah Petra, where she shall have a place prepared of God uh, that they should uh, feed her for a thousand, two hundred, and three score days. That's the other half of the tribulation. And in that half, this guy is going to try to wipe out the Jews. He's going to try to kill them all. But you don't have to worry about it because you're not going to be there for it. You're not going to be there for the second half of the tribulation. You're not going to be there for the first half. Unless you're about, you got the mentality of a 12-year-old. you got sunstroke from living in Arizona out in the desert. You don't understand Matthew chapter 24. And you think that you're going through the tribulation because you saw, you saw tribulation and you saw the Lord coming back in Matthew 24. And you think every rapture passage must be about me. Man, I hate to tell you this, guys. It is not all about you. You know, I can find three verses. I didn't even say passages. I can find three whole verses that refer to us about the Lord's return. Um, the dead shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain. First Thessalonians. Uh, first Corinthians chapter 15, then we shall all be changed. Uh, Philippians chapter 3 verse 21, then he shall uh, uh, change our vile body to be likened unto his glorious body. That's the only three verses that directly speak about us. Well, why do we have more verses? You're gone, shut up. I mean, really? Look, you know something? If, if, they sent, they, if they sent an old checker cab to take me home, I wouldn't complain. I would not complain. And so, guys, here's what I'm telling you. You need to read your Bible. You need to see who's talking. You need to see what the, who, they're, who they're talking to and what they're talking about. And you know what he's talking about? He's talking about tribulation. No. No, he's not. Matthew 24, he's not. He's talking about coming back. Except for them, he's coming. You're looking for his second coming, they're looking for his first. And they said, well, how will we know when you're going to come? Well, it's going to be real easy. There's going to be wars and rumors of wars. Uh, there's going to be people saying Christ is here and Christ is there and Christ is there. Uh, you're going to know that. You better, you better uh, the, the temple will be there. Does anybody see a temple? No, I'm not even going to say that the temple may not be built before we leave. And if they start working on it next week, get excited. Okay. Uh, I had a guy say this one time. He said, they don't have to build the temple. All they can do is put up the tabernacle. And I said, no. they got to put up the temple. And then I read 1 Samuel. You know what the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 1? And I think it's going to be the temple. I don't think it's going to be the tabernacle. I think it's going to be the temple. But in 1 Samuel chapter 21, or 1 Samuel chapter 1, read it yourself. It says in chapter 1, I believe it says in chapter 3, it says, Eli sat by the door of the temple. There is no temple. Solomon, Solomon wasn't even born. He didn't build a temple. There was no temple. You know what he's you know sitting beside? The door of the tabernacle. And if God can call the tabernacle a temple, I am not telling him he can't. I just want you to know this. If it, if it only has to be the tabernacle, they could have it done next week. I mean, if they, if they got to build a lot of brick and stone and everything else, it's going to take a little while. We'll watch it. But they could have that thing up in a week. Okay? I don't, you say, well, you think it's going to be the tabernacle? No, I think it's going to be the temple. I mean, talking about stones and the whole smash right on top of that golden dome. Yes, that's exactly what I think. But, but here's what he's talking about. See, he's telling them this. 
They're going to tell you Christ is here. Here's how you know. And he said, you're going to know he's here because there's going to be this tribulation, this part of tribulation, this is going to happen. They're going to be, there. you had better believe this. Guys, Matthew 24 was not written to you. Well, I want it. Then stay. But even that, you can't, can you? Because when he tells us to get out of here, we're out of here. You say, preacher, why are you telling us this? Because we equate good video to good doctrine. I cannot tell you how many churches I have walked in and somebody said, I got people in my church, they, there's a guy in Arizona, they're watching his videos, now they think we're going through the tribulation. He, this guy also believes that we're the replacement for Israel. Okay, listen, I got a YouTube station, YouTube channel, and um, uh, it's only been up for about three months. We have 11,000 views. I made a video about Israel, uh, about uh, this Stephen Anderson, and, um, and I put it on there. Out of that 11,000 views, 6,800 of them are people viewing that one. You say, why? It's everywhere. When I made that video, I got responses from China, from England, from Australia. I have had pastors all over the country say, that guy's in my church. He's in some of your churches, you don't even know it. And you know why you're not gonna be able to defeat him? Because you believe the same thing. No, I don't believe we're going through tribulation. No, you believe every time you see rapture, it's you. And if you're gonna claim every rapture, you're going halfway through it, guys. I am telling you, I am out of here. You are out of here before the, before the tribulation starts. And then what's going to go on in chapter 24 is going to go on. And the Lord's going to come back, just like he told them. And he's going to get the ones that listen to what those 144,000, he's taking them out of there too. And then this earth, you know what it's going to be? You guys who are in the military, free fire zone. It is going to be a free fire zone. You say, Why? Because there isn't one person here he has to worry about. And he is going to lay this planet open. But if you don't get it straight, who is talking, who he's talking to, and what he's talking about, you won't under, un, understand Matthew chapter 24. And then some of you are even going to... I had a guy tell me that he said, I've got pastor friends coming in telling me now that they think they're going through the tribulation yeah. and that, God, that we're the replacement for Israel. Yeah. You say, because that guy fooled them? No, they were already fooled. And they weren't reading their Bible anyway. Right, that's right, right. They got their three verses on the tribulation when they're in Bible college and never studied another one after that. Right. And if your Bible study ended at college, you are untrue to your calling. And you are untrue to that book. And you are very, very untrue to the people that you are supposed to protect. They are just sheep. They don't know better. They're so dumb. I'm sorry, they are, aren't they? They're so dumb. And you know what really happens? I, they say this. We have here a wolf in sheep's clothing. You know what a wolf does? He goes up to a dead sheep. Brother, brother uh, Eric was talking about that dead uh, Rottweiler. Uh, uh, they'll find a dead sheep, and they will low crawl under the fleece and stand up, and it'll be draped across them. That's where that comes from. And then it'll just slowly walk into the flock, and suddenly there's a dead sheep. That's exactly what happens, and that is exactly what is going in, going on right now. And, and the problem is that you're not, you're not ready to handle it because you're not in the Bible yourself. Guys, we are required to be in this book. You are not required to have a good golf stroke. You are not, re you are not required to, to do a lot of stuff you're trying. You're not required to have a really nice website. But we are required to know this book and read this book and, and, and study this book, okay? Yeah. And your people desperately need you to do that because you are the guy that's supposed to be fighting the wolf. Right. And I hope, I hope something here sharpened your sword. Yeah. I hope something here will help you when, when you have to explain to one of your people. I, I, I taught a while back, uh, back in August at Brother DeMichael's church uh, that, uh, that Israel... That, we're not, that, that Israel, we're not a replacement for Israel. I, and I mentioned Stephen Anderson, and there was a good, a good friend, pastor, good friend. And after it was over, uh, I preached for him for, yeah, I've known him for 20, 20, 25 years, preached for him I don't know how many times. He said, that was really good. I just don't know that we needed that. 
Well, it's okay, because some of you just said the same thing. And two weeks later, he sent me an email and said, I got a guy in my church on that. And I gave him what you gave us. Thanks. And some of you are saying, Gifted, I really need this. You don't even know if you need it. And you're not going to know if you need it until one of your people walks in and says, you know, preacher, this thing about us getting out before the tribulation, I'm just not too sure. You, I mean, look at Matthew chapter 24. It says it plainly right there, after the tribulation. I saw a video called After the Tribulation, so that must... You, preacher, you've been teaching us bad doctrine. Well, I don't know that I needed this. Hang on. That just means the wolf hasn't come by your flock. I could tell you, I could tell you a dozen and a half flocks he's visited. That's a lot. That's a lot. And I will guarantee you, there are people in here, pastors in here, that your people are watching it, and I wouldn't doubt some of you have even been scratching your head because you said, wow, they taught me in Bible college that I was going out before it. But look at Matthew 24. Right there, it says it. You better understand that book. All right, let's have a word of prayer, and I'll let the preacher come up here. Father, you said you gave us.